गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे विल बी कवरिंग द नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट विच इज प्रोफेशनल कंडक्ट एंड एडवोकेसी प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स रेदर Yes, this is uh, uh, paper two, advocacy and professional ethics. So, in this subject, uh, the questions are generally asked during AOR examination about the professional conduct and advocacy, as to about the professional ethics. and uh, about bar council of india rules and uh, you must also know about the advocates act and about the judgments also some of the judgments were dealing with the professional conduct of the advocates so i would advise all of you that you must read a book which is which in my view is very very important this book has been written by mr k v let k v krishna murthy uh k v uh, krishna swami iyer k v k so interestingly i will tell you that this book was written i think in 1948 and still the relevance of this book in my view i find it very very relevant even in today's world and uh, what a book you know you i think you know you you should read it i it is in your course also and um, it has dealt with you know the aspects of professional conduct and advocacy Yes. So about the legal profession, this book says that uh, legal profession is a noble profession, and has uh, outlined about the uh, legal profession and its responsibilities, and then how a lawyer should be equipped with, and how he should study law. and uh, there is chapter with regard to training also and this chapter with regard to you know how you should you you know meet with client how you should deal with your clients and how you should be prepared in a case and uh, as to how you should draft a matter what should be there in drafting and uh, about you know because in in trial court you will find that uh, trial court all together different proceedings so how to draft a plaint or how to you know conduct uh, examination of a witness or uh, cross examination of a witness and how your con conduct should be in court right so uh, we will uh, we will we'll try to cover all those uh, you know chapters as to uh, in a very in a in a very brief manner as to what that book says because uh, as i tell you because sometimes i have found that uh, direct some excerpts from the book would be put you know in in the question paper and you will be asked to uh, you will find that you will be asked to you know to explain all those things and if you have not read that book then uh, i tell you then in that case you won't be able to answer that but in this class i will try to cover the the important aspects of of the book in this you know in 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 my in 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 this uh, session in today's session first uh, i tell you about contingency fee right see this is uh, a chapter which is very very relevant and uh, questions are asked about it and our uh, judgments of supreme court is also based on the old judgments so 
what is contingency and uh, whether contingency fee is allowed in india or not so because see uh, we have adopted uh, a practice which is being followed in uk unlike usa in uk also to the best of my knowledge there is you can't ask for any contingency fee now in usa now earlier uh, contingency fee was not allowed but subsequently they amended their provision and now there's uh, some 30 40 years back or 1980 70 i don't remember the exact period but now sorry but 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 now um, usa uh, the contingency fee is allowed or uh, what we call contingency is which is which is subject to or relating to that matter like uh, what is you know uh, i don't know which in my view it is not correct but uh, in in some you know area this is prevalent in india also though it's legally wrong though it's illegal like uh, in land acquisition matter i have found that advocates they you know they decide their fee on the basis of the outcome of the result like uh, in land acquisition matter you will find that uh, they will say you know if you like get this if you if i get your award enhanced first uh, there may be you know some contingency fee in award also like if award is being if land is acquired you you find that uh, during land acquisition land is acquired thereafter award is passed and uh, for award also some lawyers they say you know i will get you the award and there won't be any difficulty and for that i will charge 5% or 10% and then in many cases uh, they enter into an agreement also and uh, after that award is passed for enhancement like in earlier land acquisition act uh, for enhancement uh, they used to go to the the civil court the district judge the but nowadays uh, due to this uh, new act now award is passed and then you have to you know for enhancement of that award you can file it so what happens that you know for if if award is being enhanced in that case also the lawyer say that i will charge this percentage of the fee if the award is enhanced like in uh, motor uh, uh, msct cases also a motor vehicles accident when you know there is uh, some injury or some death of the uh, then in that case case is filed for seeking compensation and that case is also filed on the basis of like some percentage uh, which the parties agree and sometimes they enter into agreements also so i will tell you all those agreements are illegal that have got no validity in the eyes of law so you should not first thing should not fix your fee on the basis of percentage because this is illegal and uh, obviously you should not enter into any such agreement otherwise you may lose your advocacy also so first uh, judgment uh, you know in uh, i tell you uh, in 1881 you see you know long back there is a judgment of uh, bombay i think it's bombay high court judgment sivram hari versus arjun uh, ilr 5 bombay 258 now it says that you know any agreement for remuneration on contingent is illegal and uh, with re respect to wakil any any this agreement was entered and this agreement was held to be illegal and that advocate was found to be guilty of professional mis misconduct so 
thereafter uh, there is a judgment of gangaram also that was judgment of uh, this is punjab's judgment 1907 punjab record number 61 this full judgment full bench judgment of nine judges where seven out of nine judges condemned this practice of back fee or contingency fee now i tell you you know there is one more judgment mong hutan uh, this is uh, nine this is 21 wr 29 297 the all those judgments you will find mentioned in that book so because i told you that book is uh, that was written in 1948 and it's very relevant and that judgment you know mentioned there is one more judgment uh, an advocate 1904 calcutta law journal 29 which also you know that this this all judgment is is on that contingent fee only i just wanted to tell you that uh, the practice in india is like you cannot ask for and the honorable supreme court has followed those judgments which i tell you in my subsequent you know lecture subsequent session now uh about uh, the legal profession what mr k v k says is that uh, this is uh, you know amongst all learned profession if you ask me about about the independent profession so this is one such independent profession you know unlike you know advocacy unlike you being an advocate there is no such other independent profession and uh, the what is the purpose of this profession the purpose of this profession is not to create any dispute not to create any strife but to settle the dispute but to solve the problem the uh, i tell you about uh, what mahatma gandhi has also said that he got immense immense pleasure in settling the matter so as a lawyer also it is our duty to solve the problem and particularly when the clients they want to like settle the matter wants to compromise wants to get end of all those things in this uh, in, in that case also our endeavor should be to get it settled and not to you know oppose that compromise and all those things uh, and uh, see and uh, yes uh, one important thing as to you know what happens that a case comes to you and you find that that case is like there is it's hopeless there is no merit in that matter so what is your duty in that case uh, in my view also the book also says the same thing that you should be very honest to your client and you should tell him you should not uh, give any you know any uh, like uh, should not throw him any dream and give a false hope uh, but you should tell him that what is your opinion and you should tell him that uh, in your view that case is not very good particularly when you are practicing in supreme court in that case uh, you should tell your client that uh, this in what is your view about this case and uh, mind you you know if you give an honest opinion it's not that uh, you will you know lose your case maybe you maybe you lose that case but that client will go to you know other lawyers to other persons and will say that you know i have found a lawyer who is very honest who is very genuine he gives very you know good opinion and and if the client gets the file you know get the file to you and you file it and you get an adverse order in that case also client would be prepared and completely satisfied that uh, yes my lawyer has given me the sound opinion and my lawyer tried his best to to his ability and even after losing that matter he he may you know go and 
advertise in your favor so this is what an advertisement you are entitled to also like when you win a case also your client your client like uh, uh, advertises about you that he has found a very good lawyer and it's uh, sometimes you know uh, uh, you may think that you know the your client has got you know this point that very point is very favorable point or, or a very good point and you should plead only that point and the point the other point being urged by your client is is a weak point you should not like you you think that in your view it's not uh, a point which is of much significance so about that this book says no don't consider that you are not a judge right so your duty is to put forward all the you know client all all the points of your client before the court and it is for the judges to decide so whether that weak point sometimes you may get the the judgment on the basis of that weak point also which you consider to be weak so that also happens so and uh, justice uh, lord macmillan i would say he has uh, he has opined in johnson versus emerson that a man's right is to be decided by the court and not by the attorney so don't be a judge you just you know it is your duty if a client comes to you you go through all the papers you sit with him and you should interact with him in a very you know cool and composed manner you should not get irritated also like some i i find that sometimes i get get irritated so this is lesson i will also try to you know imbibe by it and uh, you should not and you should listen to your client maybe maybe some points uh, what he is saying is relevant and you may miss that point so so in that case you know how you should deal with it and you should put forth all those points and uh, about this legal profession you know uh it has been stated uh, kvk says you know if the machine of civilization has to be moved in that case uh there cannot be any civilization without order and there can be no order without law and no law without lawyers to interpret it very rightly said because uh, civilized society uh create law and order you know there should be only when 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 we you know there's so many Uh, uh earlier also it has happened then what is the what is the need of the you no know, court what what is the need of the lawyer why there should be so much uh, co- cost is involved so much expenses so uh, why not you know the archaeal mode of 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 deciding cases where there used to be a raja or koi kaji hua karta tha and you just go before and the persons will plead ki this has happened or that has happened and that was decided in that manner without any codified law without any codified procedure also so so uh, what is the so i tell you like for a complex con- country like ours for a complex society then there is you know uh, there is need of law and order first thing for economic progress also for economic development also that our country should have a very sound law and order this is first priority and obviously the dispensation of justice should be timely there is no doubt about it it should not be cumbersome It, it it like uh, it should be less expensive also all those things are there i you know understand but uh, law and order is very 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 important 
for the development of the society and uh, like our in our democracy uh, you know obviously it's slow process but i think you know there are reforms in democracy so there would be reforms in law also and uh, and i am very hopeful that uh, the law may be reformed in such a manner where uh, there would be speedy justice but to say outrightly that you know what is existing and uh, that should be thrown away and this is not good for society so i humbly dissent you know my dissent for all those things because i i sincerely feel that uh, courts are necessary lawyers are necessary and you you please see all the you, towards the developed nation you will find that uh, the law and order is really really good and there is uh, the the courts are independent and, uh, and 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 our constitution also this justice liberty that is not possible without lawyers with, without judges and uh, and therefore you know this uh, there's so many you know uh, writers who have stated so many things about it uh some important excerpts like destroy the bar and you will destroy the bulwark of a civil and criminal justice and you will destroy the very foundation of security and liberty uh, a government of law is supreme manifestation of civilization so all those things you know why this legal profession is necessary that you can write down uh, uh, or otherwise also it's important for us to strengthen it now what should be the equipment of a lawyer this is chapter 2 kvk says that the first equipment should be learning and wide knowledge and uh, and uh, it says that uh, you know lord borham has said that a lawyer must know everything about something and something about everything so uh, rightly said because why it is said that sometimes you know you'll get a matter with regard to medical negligence sometimes if you see the electricity law i was founding it i, I found it to be very very difficult initial days i was really struggling with it and i was not able to understand you know the so many terms which was uh, which i was finding it very difficult but with the passage of time and with able assistance of my colleagues and uh, with the assistance of the department also now i think i am able to understand the electricity law also so you see the electricity law you see the ibc you you see the other parts also like civil law like uh, banking law there's so much you know so uh, you because i would also add, you know i would advise you that you should daily read newspapers or uh, this is my personal advice because you should know about you know what is going on you should know about what are the burning issues and uh, it's not that you should cut you know yourself and you should be aloof from the society it is neither advisable for the judges nor for the lawyers so you should know about you know and uh, and uh, many persons believe that you know if a person is talkative he talks too much and very good orator so he would be a very good lawyer it's not like that uh, yes it it may be an aid like if you can talk well if if you are very fluent and if you are a good uh, orator then definitely it's an uh, like uh, it's an advantage to you but uh, you know you should know your subject very well because it is the knowledge which speaks and it is your you know how prepared you are in your matter that really really matters 
not only your oratory so whenever you you know go before court so uh, this is my advice even you know you are a you may be a, a junior counsel or you an advocate assisting your senior you should be very well prepared in that matter and uh, sometimes you will find that your uh, your senior colleague is like busy in some other court and you go before the court and and you ask for a pass over and the court says no no you just tell me what is the point involved and uh, in that case if you if you cut a sorry figure in the court then uh, that you don't know about this matter then it's not a good impression that you will be making before the court and uh, the court you you know think bad about the senior also as to that senior does not give an opportunity to his uh, colleague or uh, that uh, that junior advocate or an advocate is not prepared well uh, so he must you know because of uh, so it is you know on both i would say on the senior counsel as well as on on the advocate who is appearing for the court and 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 it is an opportunity also like uh, when you go before a court and your senior is somewhere else and uh, busy in, on his legs in some other court and the court says all right uh, you tell me about the matter and then you you know you just try to what to say uh, that exploit that opportunity and if you argue well then i tell you you know sometimes even when court thinks that this case is not good you know even that case in that case court may adjourn the matter and would say all right let your senior come so that onus does not uh, you know go to you and if the case is good then the 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 judge may say all right you know you have really argued well and we think that we should issue notice in this matter or we should give this relief to you so this uh, that you will get immense satisfaction also that you you know you you you, you exploited that opportunity and court heard you so 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 you should be prepared well this is you know this is the essence of that chapter and uh, and uh, kvk says about uh, the seven lamps of advocacy also uh, there is a, a book or uh, written by just judge abbot parry he has written and we we all know we must have heard about it also just one thing about the seven lamps of ad, ad, uh, seven lamps of advocacy sometimes you will find this you know this question being asked i'll just indicate you uh, these are honesty courage industry wit eloquence judgment fellowship so that is what you know honesty you all know courage you should be honest to your client also right should be honest to your courage yes this as i told you this is an independent profession and uh, you have got this privilege to argue your case behalf, on behalf of your your client and you should be courageous like yes you you have got this duty you know and you can argue well or like you can assist well or whatever it is so that courage must have been there and you should not you know you should be fearless as to what uh, the others may think or 
or or or like that uh, you see sometimes you know a lawyer uh, he will find if there is any cause in that case you will find him mentioning before the honorable chief justice of india uh, obviously in a proper manner sometimes before uh, the honorable chief justice of the high court also and uh, and and puts uh, his or their case her case so and uh, industry is obviously you know about your labor it's it's the hard work which is key to success it's not that that when mood comes you will work and when you don't have mood you will not work no no uh, i tell you you may earn money you may make money i won't say earn money you may make money but you can't be a very good advocate unless and until you have this ability to do hard work this is sine non quo for you know that is the most important thing for success in in advocacy wit obviously eloquence how you you know plead and your efficiency and and how uh how your oratory is and uh, judgment is about uh judgment is about you need to distinguish you need to decipher there should be discrimination you know discriminating like i would tell you when you uh, critical analysis also and when you read a judgment you try to read the full judgment it's not that only you just see the head note and you you know get ready and you you know go before court it should not be like that is obviously time you know some because of time constant sometime you do like that but i would advise you to you know and the judgment about you know Uh, about you know how to find the ratio judgment about your case judgment about you know what are the relevant points because i have seen you know it's not only you know you go before a court and you start arguing so it, you should you know you, sh- you should argue or you should put forth your point in such a manner that judge is also like listening to you and uh, fellowship is obviously uh, uh with your relation with your other members of the bar and uh, and mr k uh, kvk adds one more point and he says that apart from this seven lamps of advocacy he has said that there should be tact also how to you know uh deal with the situation so this is in his view is is an eighth point and very one very important thing he says you know about the newcomers about the advocates who have started their practice or who are even practicing uh, suppose you get a chance to argue a matter then you should be ready like you know a, like an actor does like uh, you should there should be rehearsal also like uh, an actor if you see he will read the script and uh, he will try to you know as to how he has to perform before stage or how he has to perform before camera for that he will he will do exercise so that exercise he says that it should be done by young counsels also and uh, he says about the uh, he he gives hint about the study of law also as to as to how it should be studied like it's not that you it's not only that you read it you should study it and you should study with with precision with accuracy and in in an spirit of inquiry because uh, uh some seniors also i asked because in my 
in my early days so when i came here in supreme court and uh, i saw the brief to be very bulky the name is only brief but you see the brief are were so bulky and even today are so bulky sometimes 1000 pages sometimes you know 2000 pages sometimes 200 pages whatever so how do you read it and next day you have got your matter listed and you have to assist your senior you have to prepare notes also and uh, you will find it very difficult so it's not that you know you'll have to engage yourself in a in a as to you'll have to complete the matter complete in a mat the matter within you know 2 hours or 3 hours and then pre- just prepare a note and then you go and brief your senior and you should brief in such a manner as to you know you argue the matter before court then only your briefing is complete then only and brief in a manner like you cover the fact and you cover the law also thank you so how to read it so this 2 hours 3 hours so you know then i asked also this question then my senior told me you know do it like you know you are inquiring something because and that was very right also kvk also says, says the same thing when you get the matter you just decide it what is relevant what is not relevant how can you cover in that time and you read it with the, like you know what happened that thereafter and the note should be like in chronology like if you you know prepare your notes in a chronological manner manner what happened first you will be able to you know correlate all those things and then you can able to make a picture also in your mind as to you know what is happening so this should be and there should be in a way of inquiry also that okay, all right so then only you'll have to you know remove grain from chaff otherwise it will be very 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 matlab it will be very difficult task so you read in that manner you study in that manner it's the time factor how much time you have got how to read it there there should be you know and uh, and uh, i'll tell you about uh, i'll i'll tell you about you know the the writers you know about one incident he writes uh, he mentions about a case relating to tirupati uh, yes so the mahant of that temple was charged with uh, with uh, misappropriating valuable treasures and that mahant had buried that treasure uh, and had put a flag uh, staff that i think only it is. flag flag staff he has you know the flag he has put on that treasure and just covered it up like and uh, then one application was filed before uh, the court and said that this mahant is uh, you know his activities are suspicious and he has been charged with misappropriation of valuable assets which he has uh, put it in that flag like stuff you know under that that thing so this application was for removal of that flag so that this uh, that could be dug and if he has you know Uh, put some valuables that could be you know that could be traced and recovered so that application was vehemently opposed like anything and it was said that no no how can you do that this will hurt our religious sentiment you understand this is you know date is such a sacred thing you can't do it all those things are there then an argument was made which was fiat 
justicia raut calium it means that let justice be done even though heavens pay, even then heavens fall even when heavens falls justice should not be deprived or justice should not be denied <laughs> and that application was allowed so this is you know the spirit of law which is being followed in this country so so i remember you know ancient times when during obviously it was not codified in that manner but if you trace back to history justice was found to be one of the most paramount you know uh thing of the society that society where justice was there was considered to be a, a, a society otherwise there would be a jungle raj there would be a chaos right so then uh, he speaks about the training grounds and uh, and says yes uh, an important thing i would miss that uh, a junior you know a lawyer when when start practice in any court beat uh, trial court district court beat uh, high court or supreme court or beat any tribunal when he starts practice in my view he should join a chamber a seniors chamber this is view of kvk also obviously i am following his views it's not only my views so there you will get you know a great learning exercise you will find that uh, you will you will see how uh, the senior gets ready with the matter what to study what not to study and how to you know learn drafting how to do research how to prepare a case and uh, you should go to court also because i would say it's not only that you should sit in your chamber or in chambers a senior's chamber only you should try and you should go to court also because it's a great learning you know you know lesson i would tell you what you get in court uh i uh, when i started practice then my father took me to honorable justice mukhopadhyay at that time justice mukhopadhyay was judge of uh, high court of jharkhand and uh, i went there as, as a as a new entrant just to take his blessings and uh, i started in 2003 it's it's uh, this incident is of also 2003 so justice mukhopadhyay told me honorable justice mukhopadhyay told me that uh, you should you know daily come to court and you should spend some hours in court even though even if you don't have work first thing and second thing he told me that you know there is respect of your uh, robes so don't wear in public places <laughs> not that you put your band it's not he what he said so and uh, i sincerely you know followed his advice and i found that uh, in when you sit in any court in high court tribunal or district court you will find that you'll see how how big senior lawyers how they argue their point you know and in a very precise in a very short manner in a very short duration of time you will find that they will put all their arguments in the best possible way it's a great great learning exercise 
and you will find that you know court would also ask so many interesting questions like all right so it is always you know very very nice to see a a, a reciprocating court also you know when you are arguing something and court is going through the matter and puts a point to to the counsel be it senior counsel and junior counsel and you learn so much so much of thing and uh, the beauty of supreme court or even high court i tell you that sometimes you will see you know some uh, matter is being heard and then court is passing some judgment and next day you will find that that judgment is reported in newspapers so so and you will think that yes i was there in court and this thing happened and you will correlate with all those things so i i will tell you you know whenever you get time you should be there in court and uh, i have already covered about the thing as to meeting with your clients don't like don't get irritated give a patience hearing to him and uh, you make full inquiries of him right and don't trust that whatever he says is correct try to correlate with the documents also and uh, so that you can prepare well because uh, client may be sometimes right sometimes may be wrong so it's your duty to get ascertained as to as to about the facts and one important thing which even you know today i find it very very you know confusing and very very problematic if you ask me about the settling fees like uh, how to settle your fee because uh, see what happens that when you are a junior when you have started your practice and a client comes to you and gives you know his papers to you and ask you you please you know draft a writ petition i have to file a writ petition before high court and you say all right i will draft your case and you start doing all research and and you draft your case in you know in the in with your abilities and in your view you have you have put hard work and uh, you know you file it before court also you argue it also and uh, or, or or you file it or you engage some other counsel also whatever or you argue it also and then you ask your client you know that uh, about your fee that uh, you please pay me you know 1 lakh which is commensurate with my work which i have done or you ask him please you know that uh, that is your fee you give a bill to him and the client says no 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 uh, this is exorbitant and i am not able to pay such you know fee and i in my view i don't think that uh, you know this is commensurate with your work so <laughs> what to do so in that case you will feel you know dissatisfied i tell you because if you think that you have charged you know you have asked for your fee which which you should be honestly entitled to and that client is saying like that you 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 may feel hurt you know so in that case i would advise you you know whatever you think your fee is justified you ask your client to pay to it right you settle your fee Or, or after doing so that he pays your fee he doesn't say that no no you have asked rightly or wrongly whatever you know so so this is my advice and this is uh, obviously that book also says the same thing so that client may you know come that client may go but you will have that satisfaction that what you think right you have asked that that fee and uh, initial days you should you know you please see as to how much work is involved and uh, and accordingly you know you try to oh, charge so that that client remains with you also because this 
thing is always there you want to have your client and you don't want to lose him also so all those things you should you know decide and settle your fee so it is always advisable to settle it first and then you go ahead and uh, about the preparation of case yes i have already said about it this that you know how you should prepare it and i think you after standing in the bar of 4 years or 3 years you all know particularly as to how to get prepared in a case as i will just repeat it is my advice that try to prepare your case in a chronological manner so that you correlate with it and your preparation would be in my view two fold first you you should be prepared well with the facts of your case and second the law what is the law involved and what are the decisions what are the precedents so that uh, in that view you no know, in that manner your preparation would be would be complete and study the old decisions also if you get time then in that case you will you know correlate sankari prasad this you know first amendment challenged and then supreme court held this and then in golaknath this amending power of the constitution challenge and then case one and the bharti and then other decision so decisions also you you should try to try to correlate what is the old and how it has been followed and uh, in that manner you should try to and uh, you should prepare in a in a manner that you should not be surprised with your opponents any point, you know any 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 point of your uh, opponent you should uh, like uh, you should be prepared that what your opponent would be thinking what is his point and how can you overcome his point so all those things you should you know so that so that you don't get surprised in court this you know it is not good to cut a sorry figure before court so so you should be prepared in that manner and then this chapter says about drafting of pleadings see i tell you uh, kvk's book of drafting of pleadings is mostly with regard to appellant or trial court practice or original uh, practice of original jurisdiction then normally you know what you follow is that you plead fact and not law but this is not the practice in supreme court i will cover in my uh, drafting pleadings as to how you should you know prepare how you should draft a matter before supreme court so so but uh, few points of kvk is very important is that your drafting should be very brief and uh, it should be relevant and uh, and 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 uh, and and there should not be any you know allegations of fraud is very very important because uh, this is you know this is uh, this practice is being followed in india in many courts that this is fraudulent and all those things of allegation you make here in india but i tell you you should be very careful you know with your drafting because this is not considered to be good in 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 other courts of of world like uk or like in usa so you should be very very sure as to what you are pleading in your draft fraud is not like you can make reckless allegations uh before uh, because uh, in that case you will have be you know you can be imposed a heavy cost also so you should be very very clear with regard to to you know it i would you know i would tell you about a case 
विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट केस इज बींग आस्ट इन 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 दिस टॉपिक इन इन दिस सब्जेक्ट लाइक आई टेल यू देर इज अ केस अ डिसीजन ऑफ नाइनटीन फोर्टी सो मायर्स वर्सेस एलमेन दिस इज नाइनटीन फोर्टी ए सी टू एट टू दिस इज अ डिसीजन ऑफ हाउस ऑफ लॉर्ड्स सो वॉट हैपेंड इन दिस केस दैट अ प्लेंटिव फाइल्ड अ केस obviously against a defendant and uh, during the uh, like plenty filed a case and the defense counsel the the solicitor for the defendant so what he did he you know in his defense he took some defenses which he knew or suspected to be false so that defense he took which in his knowledge may be a false or he suspected it to be a false and he prepared and permitted his client to make an affidavit of the documents which were inadequate and false that was in within his knowledge those do that affidavit of documents was false so plaintiff won that case and uh, some like obviously some damages and costs was awarded in favor of the plaintiff plaintiff was not able to recover those damages from the defendant then he filed a suit then he filed a case against the solicitor of the defendant and the true charges what he alleged that he took defenses which was suspected to be false or which he known that it may be a false defense and second that he prepared and permitted his client to file a false affidavit false affidavit of documents some false documents also and the trial court allowed that and trial court imposed cost against the solicitor of the defendant now the solicitor filed an appeal before the appellate court appellate court reversed that decision of the trial court thereafter the said plaintiff he filed his case before house of lords and i tell you that house of lords held that the decision of the trial judge was correct and held that see so far as defenses is concerned that defenses is filed he was knowing that defenses to be a false that may not for that the solicitor is not liable it was held by the trial court it was held by the house of lords also but for all those you know the affidavits and the documents which he knew to be incorrect and filed within the knowledge of the solicitor was found to be you know contemptuous found to be that lawyer that solicitor was held to be a guilty and that solicitor took a took a defense earlier also that it was filed by his clerk and that clerk is you know very well equipped with all those things and for that for that he may not be held liable but court had said no the trial court as well as the house of lord said that no you are liable for your clerk's mistake so i remember you know 
a question with regard to that and i tell you because uh, you know in my first attempt when i appeared for aor examination so i was i i was not prepared well right and uh, i just thought that i should you know go there and i should write an exam and to assess myself as to how much i get so it was exam in that manner and i will tell you, you know all of you please don't appear in that manner it is because the number of attempts are only 5 if you lose a chance unnecessarily pressure would be on you and you would every year you will have to sacrifice your summer vacations and it would be very very painful so i would advise all of you to please you know when you think that uh, you know you are prepared well in that case only you should appear for ever examination and you should obviously try to you know clear it in the first attempt uh, I, I know that it is not possible for all of you know all of the 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 persons like all of the advocate to do it in that manner but try to at least you you know try and uh, if you like fail in that case also it, it doesn't mean that you know your your war that there is end of world or like you know it's not like that you may succeed in your next attempt so and 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 if, if examination is not you know to uh, like judge you because it's it's only a three hours examination some questions that you have prepared for well that may not come and some papers you know questions which you are, are not not prepared may come during the examination so so that may happen so i would not say that getting a very good mark means that you know that that person is equally you know is is that too you know because i i i in my pers personal view i would not uh, correlate with that thing but i would tell you certainly that uh, that it's an honor you know if you if you become an advocate on record so in that way you should try to prepare yourself why i'm saying this now is because i was not knowing about this judgment and in my in my second paper uh, with with regard to advocacy and and professional ethics i got 48 marks and uh, if i would have got two marks then i would have been like through if you ask me right in the next year because in that case only regulation and i would have cleared it but unfortunately or you say fortunately whatever it is uh, unfortunately because i could not clear in the first attempt fortunately because for that i'll have to you know did it again and in that manner i could gain something which i think is worth you know so i would tell you you know you please read that book and this judgment this question was asked in that paper and therefore i remember it that you know what happens that uh, you know uh, uh, your clerk makes any mistake so can you take that defense that it is not your mistake and it is mistake of your clerk and for that you are not liable to so in that case i would have written that you know answer very correctly it is my fault and if i would have read that judgment and i would have got that too much anyways so i would just tell you that you no know, for your clerk's mistake also you are liable so uh, you should be very very you know uh, particular about all those things and you should be very particular about you know whenever a petition is filed you please see that also there should not be any scandalous <laughs> allegation against the judges there should not be anything like which may you know bring any contempt notice to you so you must be very very careful and you see in that case cost was you know imposed on the solicitor and uh, and 
there are some follow up judgments if you uh, want to like in in that uh, that you know lean wood versus andrews andrews moore this is 58 law times i would try to provide you notes lean wood versus andrews moore 58 law times 612 it says putting in affidavit to knowledge of the ad advocate was held to be a contempt of court so and uh, a solicitor was suspended in ray james gray case this is all old decisions so this is what ethics we are supposed to follow so i think uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, cover the remaining you know topics of uh, this second subject in our next in our next lecture in, in our next session thank you very much